Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and of course, today is Tuesday. And so on Tuesdays, we go through channeled material. Now, before we get into our channeled material, which is currently Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy's channeling called The Great Human Potential, Walking in One's Own Light, I did want to go ahead and remind you guys that Jay from Spiritually Raw and Gnostic TV and I are doing a media course. Now, many of you might know, many of you might not know, but kind of my backstory before I went to India and changed directions in my life, I was educated in the format of storytelling. I worked in Los Angeles all that kind of stuff. And Jay, who did the show Spiritually Raw, has since opened up a kind of a Netflix for spiritual growth called Gnostic TV. I will eventually be a part of Gnostic TV. I've already got um, some shows that I'm scheduled to do on Gnostic TV. But together, Jay and I are going to be helping people who want to get into the media world. So if you want to open up a YouTube channel, regardless of what that YouTube channel with the content is, or if you want to get into like radio or podcasting, this is something that Jay and I can help you with. So um, if you would like to be a part of that course, then text Bryce Media to 321-216-8047. Again, that is Bryce Media to 321-216-8047. We'd love to have you on board with Jay. You'll get a lot of the business perspective, like how to set yourself up business-wise with me. I will be helping you one-on-one, -on -one how to create content, how to storyboard, how to edit, how to do thumbnails, all that good, juicy stuff. So again, if you're interested, please text Bryce Media, B-R-I-C-E, Media, M-E-D-I-A, to 321-216-8047. All right, you guys, with that being said, let's get into the channeled material. Today, we're going to be looking at the section called Healing Your Body, and this is on page 59. Your body is nothing more than a vibrational signature that is being pulsed out and reflected back into physical reality. Your body is created from an energetic template in your auric field. As you learn to consciously adjust your vibration or recalibration, you can alter your physical state as well. Any adjustments made to the template will be reflected in the physical body. All health issues are always 100% of the time created at the energetic level. We've talked about this so much, you guys, not just myself, but Catherine Edwards, Shanti and Mornay over on Aquarius Rising Africa. Every single sickness that you encounter, every single, single disease that you encounter is coming from your own genetic projection. And I know people are going to ask, well, what about, you know, cancer and stuff that you inherit from, you know, if your mom had cancer and then you have cancer. Well, in, in the Eastern philosophy, we call that inherited karma. So even though, you know, science, Western science will tell you it is an inherited issue, the East will say you picked that though to correct that karma. And again, guys, I'm not trying to give you any medical advice. These are just theories. Please always take your own health into your own hands. And if there, if you would like more information on that, um, check out Aquarius Rising Africa. You can also look on my channel and Catherine Edwards for more information. I just recently, a few weeks ago, did a video on illness and fevers. I will place that video down in the description box below of fevers and sicknesses are not what you think they are. In that video, we spoke a lot about how getting sick is actually necessary for, um, for ascension and for evolution of consciousness. We look throughout history, anytime we see a renaissance or a revolution like the industrial revolution, it is always right after there has been a big outbreak, a real outbreak like the Black Death or the plague. So these are really interesting topics to explore, especially if you're coming from a Western uh, background. 
um, just to understand yourself uh, a little bit better and hopefully, hopefully in understanding yourself better, liberate some of your fears. So let's start that again. All health issues are, as always, 100% of the time created at the energetic level. Even if you have ingested something toxic or find yourself in a toxic environment, this happens because you are in residence at that vibrational level with this frequency. If you weren't, one of two things would happen. You wouldn't encounter the toxin or it wouldn't affect your body. Do you all get that? And sometimes, like I spoke about in the video that's going to be down under show notes about the yoga fever, sometimes it's necessary for us to ingest certain toxins in order to upgrade ourselves in order to break through and detox old patterns again that's discussed in the video down in the description box below since 2010 you have been creating a new layer or template in your energetic field this is the template for your higher dimensional physical body as you begin operating in a higher frequency range or dimension you also run a higher vibrational energy through the physical vehicle. This requires a new energetic template to hold and run the energy as well as the alterations to the physical body to handle the new energy load. We call 2011 the year of activation. During this time period, you began to activate more of the new energy layer. You have many labels for this new template. Some call it the diamond light body or the crystalline body. It's all the same. The diamond is a octahedron, a two four-sided pyramid base to base. This is the shape of your new energetic vehicle and why it is called the diamond light body. A diamond is considered to be the perfect crystal. It allows you to have a more permanent connection to source energy. When you have this light body activated, you are in tune with perfection. Take a deep breath. Suffice it to say that as you go through your life and increase your frequencies, you will activate this diamond light body. Also, we encourage you to talk to your body. It loves that. The majority of you don't address your body in a positive way. Instead, you say things like, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm too short, too tall, too sick, etc. These are old programs that no longer serve you. When you give your body new instructions, it loves it. Think of it this way. Each of your cells has a unique consciousness. They are part of the whole that is you. Don't you like to be acknowledged and appreciated? Try striking up a conversation. Just follow your own inner guidance. It will lead the way. While we are giving you information to assist you on this journey, you are the ones going through this ascension process. You know what is best for yourselves if you quiet the mind and go within. You are teaching us about the process as it is experienced from your perspective. The experiment you agree to undertake is one that has never been done before in such a way we appreciate and honor that which you do. What kind of diet should I be following? We are very happy and excited to talk to you about diet, health, and well-being because right now you are being bombarded with so many notions of what you should be consuming. And the answer to that is that there isn't one specific diet to be followed and this must be considered on an individual basis. It is at the end of the day about energy levels and frequency. What's important to understand is that you are pure energy, a being of light and frequency. When we talk about diet, health, and well-being, there are two levels from which to view the issue. First, you can look at it from a very physical point of view, but that's only going to make you take you so far. The second is from the energetic standpoint. So let us start with the physical and then move on to our perspective of the energetic. When considering the type and quality of food to consume, organic, conventional, raw, cooked, animal products, requirements are based upon the individual. Ideally, you should be eating fresh, organic-grown produce and animals that have been treated with love and respect. I'm going to disagree with that, and I will tell you guys why in a minute. Some of you, however, have viewed the slaughter of animals on your planet and decided that no animal product should be consumed in any manner under any circumstances. Well, we will tell you this belief is most often fueled by judgment. No, 
We know that some of you are not going to agree. That's fine too. No, we are simply offering another pers perspective on this subject. So I'm going to say kaposh to that. And I am going to say, as we've said a lot with these channeled uh, material, when a person is channeling, they're taking in their own confirmation bias. And so let's talk about animal products for a moment. Now, I myself am not a vegan. I do eat particular dairies, although I'm very careful with what dairies I consume, meaning that I look for um, humane ways of pulling the dairy from the cow. For example, it is common in the West for um, female cows to basically be perpetually impregnated in order to continue to produce milk. And then those calves are taken out and taken to slaughter. It's a very traumatic thing. It's not right. When we're looking at our place in this world, yes, animals are second density and we are third density. But as I've said before, just because something is on a quote unquote lower density than you does not mean anything. In fact, if you think of animals as being less than you, then you're on a negative path. That's considered a hierarchy. If you're a parent and you have a child that's in the second grade and a child who's in the fourth grade, do you value your fourth grader more than your second grader? No, of course not. Same thing with animals. Okay. If you are consuming animal products from a slaughterhouse or dairy products coming from the inhumane ways of, of getting that dairy, then you are contributing to the suffering of another living thing. And that living thing did not give its consent. You are, you are taking away that animal's free will choice. That is an automatic tick against you. So with that being said, though, to graduate positive to fourth density positive, you have to be 51% service to others. So if all you're doing that's wrong in the world is eating animal products, then it's not that, you know, you're, you're still kind of teetering towards the more positive side. But you do have to be very, very aware of that. Um, for me, it's a no-go. It is an absolute no-go. Now, I became a vegetarian around the age of 14 because I could not digest animal products anyway. I was already having digestion issues when it came to um, eating, especially red meat. So I've spent most of my life not eating meat. And at this point, I just cannot even think about going back to, to that. I just don't. Um, you know, especially when it comes to like pigs. I mean, pigs have the uh, mental understanding of a four-year-old human. And the trauma, the abuse that happens, it's not okay. Um, and when we go up into higher densities, that will not be a part of our diet at all. So, um, you know, take that for what it is. There, you know, when you look at things like protein or B12, all those things that people like to throw in your face when they say, oh, but how do you get this or how do you get that? Listen, you guys, plants have way more protein and way more B12 than animals do anyway. Just do your research. Now, if you are somebody who has been a meat eater and you want to go vegetarian, my advice is to not go cold turkey. So what do I mean by this? You know, uh, if you if you're, you know, take away red meat first and then go a couple of months without red meat or take away all mammals first, anything that's mammal, take it away, go like four months without eating mammals. And then after that four months has passed, maybe then take poultry away, right? Go another four months and then at the last, last take fish away, right? Because um, you are going to go through a detoxing process. We also know that the addiction to meat, people who like feel like they need their meat, like they're addicted to it, it's the blood they're addicted to. It's the blood, right? So um, it's also when you are ingesting meat, you're ingesting the energy of that animal. So if you're eating a hamburger and that cow was slaughtered and terrorized before it was slaughtered, it, it, it put its adrenaline into the meat, into the blood. And so you're ingesting that. You're ingesting the fear. You're ingesting all of that. So be very, very careful with that. All right. Okay, let's move on. At a, pu a purely physical level, there is sometimes still the need for you. No, I don't. Nope, absolutely not. 
Nope, absolutely not. This is definitely Tom Kenyon. Tom Kenyon. I really like you, Tom. Most of the stuff I agree with you on, but there are a few things in your in your channelings that don't make any sense compared to other people other channelings that are very consistent with each other and according and, and, and according to the missing books of the lost bible the the missing books of the bible are very clear we're not supposed to eat meat very clear yashua that's the one rule yashua has is you do not touch meat you do not eat meat um so if anybody is who knows tom kenyon um, call me i think this is definitely a tom kenyon confirmation bias tom kenyon probably eats meat all right whether you choose to eat plants or meat, we do recommend that you do so with respect for nature and value the life you are consuming, giving thanks for its existence. You are absorbing the life force energy of other consciousness, but we will speak a bit more to that as you get into the energy aspect of it. All right. And I will say to you guys, one indication of a truther who is an infiltrator is those that tell you being a vegan or being a vegetarian is part of the dark. I mean, common sense, you guys, like hell, that's the stupidest thing. Now we know like Bill Gates is trying to like take over that industry by his Beyond Burgers, which are terrible for you. Terrible. Um, but no, no. Slaughtering an animal and eating it is never part of the light. It's never part of, of God. It's part of Satan. That's satanic. For animals, I get this a lot with animals eating other animals. Animals are second density. They're not in the density of choice. You are in the dens density of choice. Every choice you make matters when it comes to your ascension. So every time you choose to eat meat over eating a plant-based diet, you're making a choice to service to self. You're making a choice to buy into the suffering and the abuse of another living being so that's your choice animals are not in the density of choice they're in the density of self-awareness and animals don't overeat animals don't slaughter all right so you have to think about that that way you are in the density of choice Every choice you make counts. They even say like for me, so like if you have a bug in your house, if you kill that bug, you've made a choice into service to self. If you take that bug and try to put it outside and give it life again, you've made a choice to service to others. So it's even down to that. Now there are the laws of forgiveness. So like if you're outside and you're walking around in a park and you accidentally step on a bug that you're not aware of and you kill it, that doesn't count against you because you weren't aware that you were killing it. it all, everything matters. Everything matters. And I, for one, definitely don't want to go negative. I'm sick of this hierarchy elitist shit. I want to go positive. <sighs> when you eat too much of anything, even healthy foods, they are no longer healthy. That I agree with. If you eat too many apples if you eat too many like there's this big trend being a fruitarian that is the worst thing you can do for yourself especially if you are vata like myself so if you guys are not familiar with the vata system or excuse me the ayurvedic system of vata pitta kappa i will put those videos down in the description box below under show notes i do agree with they say that it's all individual right individuals are going to need different foods so I am predominantly Vata. That is my disposition is Vata. If I were to go on an all fruit diet, it would kill me because most fruits are also Vata. It's too much Vata. So for me as a Vata, I have to incorporate more Kappa foods into my diet. So Kappa foods would be uh, rooted foods like rooted vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, heavily cooked would be really good for me but a kappa would be great doing juices and fruits now with that being said i don't think anybody should only be consuming fruits and a lot of times these people who do these fruitarian diets they're very new to spirituality i've noticed that it's people who are real new and so they take a when people get become new at something they take a very dogmatic approach to it 
I do agree that too much healthy food isn't good for you. I tell this to my students a lot here in Atlanta. So in Ayurvedic medicine, you another element of that is that you cannot be as pure, purer than your environment. So like if I lived up in the North Georgia mountains where there was really clean water, really fresh air, not a lot of city, it would be better of me to follow an all vegan diet, right? Because I need to, I can't be pure than my environment. The environment's pretty pure. But here in the city, if I were to follow a purely vegan diet, it would make me very sick here in the city. So because I live in a city of 6 million people, because I'm in the middle of a city of 6 million people, it's good for me every now and again to get some greasy French fries or to drink a beer, if that makes sense. Because I can't be purer than my environment or else it puts my it puts me out of whack. Okay, so let's continue. Currently, there are many foods that have been introduced into the mainstream that have been genetically modified. We do know this. When food is genetically altered, you lose not only some of the ener energetic qualities of the food, but also the nutritional value. You can alter the harmonics of the energetic resonance, but you can't really add the nutrients back in it. It is best to consume a variety of natural, non-modified foods that have been grown in rich soil without toxic chemicals, allowing for more balanced intakes. And also, I will say too, so when you eat, so raw diets, let's look at a raw diet, for example. So people who are kapha are going to do better on a raw diet. A vata, like myself, if you're vata, you should never be doing a raw diet. Never. You, it will kill you. Um, you need to cook them because the cooking, so like an apple, for example, an apple is a very vata based food. If I eat an apple and my stomach hurts, I have a hard time digesting it. However, if I cook the apple like an apple sauce, it changes the chemical compound of the apple and it makes it so I can consume it. So again, if you're really interested in this, I will place all those videos down in the description box below. And as always, I would suggest finding an Ayurvedic doctor in your area so that you can go and talk to a professional so that you can figure out what's the best diet for you. Taking packaged vitamins and minerals is not quite the same thing as eating high quality food that contains those vitamins and riddles because of the energetic resonance for some. I usually judge, like I have really, really loved the vitamins and minerals from ASEA. Before I was sponsored by ASEA, I was doing a lot of Health Force vitamins and minerals, and I really like Health Force too. That's another really good company is Health Force. Um, but the, this, the, the commonality between ASEA and Health Force is when you pop open the cap, you can smell, you can smell the plants. All right. So it's very, very good when it comes to that kind of stuff. But if you're just buying vitamins and minerals, just from the grocery store, willy nilly, you're probably not getting really good quality of vitamins. Um, and that's really not doing a whole lot for your system. You can also tell from your pee as well. Like if you, if you eat vitamins that are not good for you, like the highly processed vitamins, your pee is going to be like a bright yellow color like a real yellow, different from when you're dehydrated. You know, when you're dehydrating, your pee is kind of a brownish yellow. When it's a, a, a vitamin that's processed, it's going to be like a neon yellow color in your pee. And you, that's when you know that it's not a good, your system had to like detox a lot of chemicals. But with things like Health Force and ASEA, oh man, I love Health Force and ASEA's vitamins and that issue has not happened. So, um, so just be very aware of that. All right. Due to extraction met methods and packaging, most vitamin minerals out there lose their energetic component. Not necessarily true. If this book was written in like the early 2000s, then I can see how they would say this. But in 2023, there are a lot of really good companies, again, like Health Force and ASEA, that do a really good job of making sure the vitamins and minerals hold on the nutritional value as best they can. And I can tell a huge difference. I can tell a significant difference in the way I feel on the days that I take my vitamins versus if I forget to take them or if I run out, I can tell a significant difference in my health. So um, that that's not necessarily true, what they're saying here. While you're getting some energy on the physical level, the vibrational quality of your food is never quite the same as when it's grown with love from a non-modified seed, but grown with love. So Jay has talked about this with the ASEA plant because he's been to the ASEA plant. The ASEA plant out in um, Utah 
they will send somebody home if that person is having a bad day and not feeling well. Even if, if they're just energetically off because they want to make sure as these products are being put together and sent out that it's coming from a person who is calm so that there's a lot of love coming into that. So again, I have a feeling that this was channeled like in the early 2000s when people were a little bit so in the early 2000s the only people that really knew that vitamin you had to be careful with vitamins were like the hippie people right nowadays most people are aware of this so just keep that in mind all right should you all should you be eating all carbs or all protein of course not rather it's a little bit of everything you've got to listen to your own body intuitively you will know the nutrients you need and you will be drawn to the foods that contain them animals do this as well when they are ill ill they know they need to eat certain foods and the same goes for you. But the whole notion of diet and the concoction the, the, that the word has these days is that of restriction for weight management rather than a regimen for health and vitality. And when we are talking about the issue of weight, we are talking about something vastly different than health. I tell people all the time, don't weigh yourself. If you don't have to weigh yourself, don't do it. Okay. You can tell, I feel like too with sca scales that people have lost touch with their own subtle body responses. If you throw your scales away and you just eat healthy, eat in moderation, you will notice things about your body and you will notice when you're gaining weight, you'll feel it, you'll know, you'll, you know, the, but the scales I do feel like has kind of disconnected us from ourselves. And so my suggestion is to throw the scales away. Cells can retain fluids and other biological matter for a number of reasons. It can be for protection. It can also be caused by the imbalance in the cells. If this is the case, the cells are unable to release because they are missing the chemical components they need to function properly. Besides, besides overeating, there are many other factors that can, can contribute to weight gain, which brings us to the emotional or energetic component. From our point of view, it is far more important and has a greater impact on your diet and health than anything else. Okay, yes. And uh, I will say too, so the body will react in flight, fight or flight. So I am not a fan, well, especially for a Vata, I used to be, I'm also O negative, that's my blood type. So as an O negative, uh, that blood type, most athletes are O negative, we have more oxygen in our blood. So I can go like when I used to run, I could run forever. I am very, very good with endurance and high cardiovascular work because I have more oxygen in my blood. However, though, I'm also Vata. And so high intense cardio is not good for a Vata. It swells our joints. What happens to a lot of people, and I see this a lot, I think back in like the 80s and the 90s when jazzercise was big and people really thought that cardiovascular work, like cardio was the way to lose weight. I think that myth is still very much alive within our thought process today. And people think if I'm going to lose weight, I got to go run a gazillion miles or really like get high cardio. High cardio is going to burn a lot of calories, but they're like empty calories. So basically what happens in your nervous system response is if you are doing high intense calorie work or cardio work every single day, your body is going to intuitively believe that you are under attack, that you are in a war. And because of that, because of our evolution, because of our history, any time that there has been a war, what follows that war is famine. And so what tends to happen is that the body tricks itself into like a starvation mode, even if you're not starving, because it thinks that coming up, you're not going to have access to food. And so it starts to hold on to weight. It starts to swell up. And so a lot of people I've seen in, in my career coming to me saying, oh my God, I've been doing this intense cardio for three months. My weight won't budge. I, I, I don't understand it. Well, it's because your body thinks that you're at war. And so what is really good for weight loss? And that's kind of what they're saying here. Your cells are holding on to things. So what's actually really good for weight loss isn't aerobic work, but is anaerobic work, anaerobic work like yoga and like bar and Pilates. So people and dance. So people, you think about the yoga person, the, the dance person, the Pilates person, their bodies are long, lean and chiseled. 
All right. It's because they're doing anaerobic work. So in anaerobic work, the nervous system is in a more relaxed state, right? And so it can burn deeper calories and more proficiently burn calories for the remainder of the day than when it's freaking out because you're doing high powered cardio. Now, for me, I'm about 115 pounds. I'm, I'm between 5'4 and 5'5. I'm a very thin person. I've always been thin. So what I do now for my heart, for my heart health, is I will do like a 45-minute kickboxing class, a cardio kickboxing class, once, once a week or once every two weeks. So like two, anywhere between two and four times a month. The rest of the the rest of the time, the rest of the six days a week that I exercise, I exercise six days a week. So the other five days a week, I'm doing my Ashtanga practice or bar. I'm doing anaerobic work. And so doing cardio, a cardio blast one day a week or once every two weeks is going to be good for you because the body's not going to get itself. It's just going to blast the calories. It's going to blast the heart. It's going to get that cardiovascular blood pumping that flush happening instead of putting your body into like a panicked fight or flight situation. I hope that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. And just a little behind the scenes secret guys, I am working on doing a whole other platform that is dedicated to exercise and spirituality that is in the works right now. I've been talking to a lot of different people. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. And so, um, and so I'm hoping that that makes you feel better. So if you're somebody that's out there on the elliptical machine or the treadmill every single day and you can't lose weight and you're getting upset, and your body feels swollen, just go take a yoga class. Okay. You don't need that much cardio. Your body, your poor body, your beautiful body thinks that you're in a war right now. It thinks that you are in a war and it's trying to hold on to any calories that it can hold on to so that you don't starve to death. So give your body that nervous system, that break. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's keep going. Holding on to weight, keeping your body from purifying itself or consuming foods that are not of the highest vibration sometimes serves you. You may have a, a belief or emotion in place that draws you to these scenarios. For example, you may have a belief or an emotional issue around safety. By eating pure foods, the body can release toxins and weight that numb you and keep you from feeling these unsafe feelings. By detoxing, you become more sensitive to frequency. Unless you are ready to deal with this belief or emotion, you will continue to be drawn to foods and habits that suppress them. And we did this in the shadow work, guys. I had you keep a diary about um, how you were feeling after you eat. I had you stop eating at 7 p.m., no snacking after 7 p.m. to see why you were reaching for food because you know at night when you've got nothing to distract yourself with you're just getting yourself ready for bed that's when all those thoughts tend to come up and so you're trying to reach for things to distract yourself from the thoughts that you could easily distract yourself from during the day with your work with your kids with housework with tv and so um so yeah food can be used as a crutch absolutely it can be it's it's an addiction just like alcohol and drugs that's why sometimes it's very difficult, although you've set the intention for you to get on a healthy regimen where you are consuming high quality foods. Emotionally, you are not prepared to let go of issues. By being lighter, you're going to be more in tune with your body and your emotional states. Yeah, you're going to uh, attain more autonomy. If you are not prepared to deal with these emotions, chances are you're not going to allow the physical to lighten up. That's why I tell you guys all the time, I. If you're overweight, I don't see people who are overweight as being fat. I see them as being wounded. You're heavily wounded. And I will not go to a healer who is heavily overweight because that tells me they're not working on themselves. And I know people don't like it when I say that, but that's the truth. That's the absolute truth. Emotions are not facts. Emotions are not facts. Facts are facts. So um, all of my healers are very much aware of their own body. If you can't heal yourself, how the hell are you supposed to help me? Right? I work hard to heal myself so that I can be the best version of myself and so that I know what it is that I'm telling my students to do too because I'm doing it as well. Right? So if you're overweight, it's not it's not genetics. You might have inherited some karma, but it's literally what they just said. And so it's not fat. Give yourself that break. Don't call yourself names. Love yourself enough to work on the issues that are causing you to be overweight. Same with people who are underweight. It's a, there's an issue there. All right. You don't want to deal with it. 
In those cases, you've got to go and look at what's going on emotionally. And we're not talking about issues that are necessarily tied to food and diet. What we're talking about across the board in your relationships, in your perceptions of yourself and what you are going to do in life. You can't separate the two. Again, this is a very important notion we want to get across to you. Absolutely. I totally understand what they're saying. That again, that's why I say I don't go to I don't go to healers who are massively overweight because they're not working, they're obviously not working on themselves. They're obviously ignoring a huge, huge issue in their life. And yeah, like, oh, wait, like people being overweight, some of that can be people who have been, been abused in the past. So they they hold weight in order to hide themselves, right? And so that needs to be addressed. That needs to be healed. That can't continue, okay? So if you are overweight, tell your body, thank you for showing. And in a lot of ways, weight issues, when we're talking about shadow work, Weight issues are some of the easiest issues to deal with because some people come and you can't, they're, they're not overweight or they're not underweight. And so you, you have to like really dig to find their own issues. But if your body's over, boom, there it is. There's your work. There you go. You got something to work with. It's right there. Yay. You got something to work with. Okay. If we have lost you here, let us back up and see if we can make sure that this is crystal clear because it is very important for you to understand. You attract to yourself exactly what you need. It is the law of attraction. When you are ready to move forward and release an emotional issue, you will start eating healthy foods intuitively, subconsciously. You begin eating healthy foods because of a change in mindset or an emotional pattern. Absolutely. So if, if you are overweight and you've tried every diet in the world to lose the weight and then gain it back again, to lose the weight and then gain it back again, that yo-yo dieting, that means that you're not addressing the issue that needs to be addressed. Once you can emotionally change, once you can emotionally do the work, the weight will come off and it won't come back. I've seen it a gazillion times, right? You'll, you'll start to crave healthier foods and you won't be tempted. It'll because you've healed yourself. You've healed that issue. So there's no need for the weight to come back. I hope that makes sense. You, you begin eating healthy foods because of a change in the mindset or an emotional pattern. Your body will begin to release what it was previously told to hold on to, allowing you to raise the frequency of the cells. If you are doing this at a subconscious level, there's a part of you that says, you know what? I am ready to move forward. You start to eat smaller meals. You start to eat healthier food. And guess what? Emotions start to come up so you can deal with them. You too vibrate at specific frequency ranges. When you are happy and healthy, you are at the top of the range. When you are holding negative emotion in your energy field or your body is processing a heavy toxic load, you are vibrating at a much lower rate. One of the many special attributes of this planet is the vast range of diversity in all aspects of life. Food being one of the most diverse due to the wild range of plant life here. It is, in fact, quite rare among planets. Each plant holds a unique frequency. Thus, you are able to ascertain the medicinal properties of them. You've got a wide variety, which makes your culinary experiments, your cuisines, something very, very special. We hear some can be quite wonderful, like ice cream and cookies for example. And I'm going to take this moment just to say a brief thank you again to our sponsors of ASEA. Our patrons and our sponsors are what keep this channel free. So thank you so much to our sponsors, ASEA. And I'm actually going to take this time to do a brief commercial, a brief a brief message from ASEA with their vitamin line. If this is something you're interested in, if you are being motivated by this to really start to find a high density, nutritious vitamins and minerals, I highly suggest the ASEA line. They're amazing. So a brief word from our sponsors regarding the vitamins of ASEA. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have 
have tried many, many supplements before. And you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA Redox supplement, the, the liquid, as well as the gel. But did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line? That's right, it's called the ASEA Via. There are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering. This one is the source, which is whole food and micronutrient complex. They also have Life Max, which supports a healthy lifestyle. They also have an Omega and they have a probiotic. Now again, with this being said, I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements. Again, I've, I've been using supplements for a very, very long time because early on in my adult life, especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga Yoga, I realized again, how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy. And if we're giving our body the correct energy, just like you give your car the correct energy, the correct gas, then your body, your mind, your well-being will work better for you. Now again, yes, there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap. And I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking. But one day I was on their website and I was like, you know what? I'm actually just going to try it. I'm going to order these vitamins and I'm just going to see how I like them. My boyfriend also is the same of me. He himself is very skeptical of supplements. He's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now. And so for him, he too was skeptical. Well, the first supplement we got was the source. In this supplement, it has spirulina, alfalfa leaf juice, wheatgrass juice, barley grass juice, oat grass juice, pomegranate juice, ossi berry juice, raspberry juice, blueberry juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, goji berry juice, sea kelp, broccoli, cabbage, parsley, kale, dandelion, and broccoli sprouts. It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I again am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, that this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory, basically. It's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back, that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins, that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them but from what i have heard so i don't take the omega but from what i have heard from people who do take the omega their biggest biggest takeaway from a c is omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day now i personally am hoping that one day a will make an omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians 
just like they have done with their collagen radiance. They've made the collagen radiance vegetarian friendly. So anyway, guys, just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA. If you are interested or want more information on the vitamin line or any of ASEA's products, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code and make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country that will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government so just double check on that it is available in the United States I think it's available in most countries at this point but again for more information text J text Bryce info to 321-216-8047 if you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them I will put a link down in the description box that takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. And if you guys have any questions about the vitamins from ASEA, you can ask them down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to ask, answer any questions. I do them every single day. So their probiotics are amazing, by the way. So if you're somebody like me who is Vata, it means you're you're dry, your organs are dry, or if you're RH negative, which I'm both. I'm both RH negative and Vata. So I have very dry skin, very dry organs. Um, I have to be on some sort of probiotic because my colon does tend to shut down from time to time. So if that's, I, I've been so happy. A lot of the times the, the colon uh, vitamins and minerals that I've taken in the past have been quite aggressive. And uh, the probiotics from ASEA are freaking amazing like they really help me to be regular i know that's dmi but you know as we say in yoga you're only as happy as your colon is functioning so when you know i, I tell my students all the time because for example with exercise you always twist right first and then left because your ascending colon is on the right side of your body so if you take a yoga class and you're twisting left first then right you you run the risk of constipating yourself and so i always tell my students you know constipation isn't fun and it sure as hell is not cute so so we don't want it we want to keep the colon working so twisting right first then left and of course taking the probiotics that you need um they're amazing uh i've just I, I it is it's it doesn't it doesn't cramp my stomach like there are some some supplements i've taken in the past because if i don't have support I won't go to the bathroom i know that's tmi i remember when i lived in los angeles i, I lived with my the boyfriend i had at the time um because, you know, when you, you live with someone, you get real personal. Um, there was one day I, we were sitting, I was sitting at the desk on the computer and he like walked out of the bedroom and he looked at me and he, he looked at me and he goes, how long has it been since you went to the bathroom? And I was like, a week, 10 days, something like that. And he was like, we need to go to the hospital right now. Like he had picked up on the fact that I was just not going to the bathroom. And I thought that was normal because that's how I've been my whole life. So um, my colon just shuts down if I eat particular foods. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah doing so going trying to get on a schedule trying to take care of my colon by eating the proper foods by taking the vitamins and minerals i need you to keep to assist my organs to keep them from drying up most of the time in the past it's been very aggressive and it caused it can cause some stomach cramping but asia's probiotics no stomach cramping very very easy very good on the system so i highly suggest it if that is something that you struggle with okay when you put those things into your body, it takes a certain amount of energy to process them out. So you are lowering your frequency. But if you have such an emotional attachment to those foods and you really want to have that pleasure, but continually deny yourself, the negative emotion that builds up is far more detrimental to your body and the overall frequency than if you had the cookie or ice cream and process the toxins out. Absolutely. So yes, when you go on the restriction stuff, you're going to end up blowing it anyway. Deal with the emotions. 
deal with the emotions because once you've dealt with the emotions, you can still enjoy your comfort foods, but you'll be enjoying them in an appropriate moderation. That's not going to make you overweight because you're, you're not, you're not eating the, the cookie and the ice creams to mask um, an issue that you need to address. If that makes sense. So you got to find a balance there. Denying yourself or simply the constant perception of denial can do more damage than actually having the food. This is also important for you to know and understand. That's just a taste of what's going on with your diet. As you change and begin to grow spiritually, most of you will not be drawn to the animal products quite as much. Okay, there we go. As their frequency is a bit lower than that of plants. Absolutely. When it comes to animals, the manner in which they lived and perish is locked into the frequency of their molecules. I just said that, didn't I? Okay, thank you, Palladians, for now confirming what I've been saying. Absolutely. So when you eat meat, you're eating death. When you eat plant life, you're eating life. The choice is yours. You are absorbing and accessing, if you will, its life experience. If it is one of your few intimate connections to earth and her rhythm of life. If you are eating an animal that has been tormented or their death was quite traumatic, their frequency is far lower than an animal that has had a happy lifetime. Any type of murder is murder, though. Whether you're doing it for a, a farm-raised animal that's lived out in the pastures or it's going through a factory, it's still murder. We've got we've gone a bit around here in a circle, and this is in part how we like to work with you. We don't want you to be thinking in too linear a fashion. We want to start to get you thinking multidimensionally. So we hope we haven't lost you here, dears. Last thing we want to discuss is how to work with food if it has been genetically modified or you are not certain of its origin. You can alter the frequency of food by sending it energy, love, and good vibrations. This releases the negative emotion component that is locked into the physical cells so as not to be taken into the body upon consumption. This is the notion of blessing your food. By giving thanks for it, by giving it energy, by giving it positive feelings of love and gratitude, you can alter the structure of the cellular resonance. This is one practice you can follow for both food and water to lighten the vibrational load on the body. So that was quite a heavy little chapter there, guys. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. I will say, I'm going to see if I can get, my boyfriend's a really private person, so I don't know if he'll do this. But there is a chant that he learned from um, Maya Twari, one of his teachers, um, that he does over our food. It's a Brahmin Vedic chant. I will see if I can get him to record it because he's like a Sanskrit master. So I'll see if I can get him to record the chant and I can put the um, words in it and the English translations. So um, if, if you guys are interested in that, if you're not, no big deal. But let me know if you're interested down in the comment section below. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, let me know, especially those of you who have done the shadow work challenges. And of course, the 30 day and the 60 day shadow work challenge we've done did address food. We did address it. We, we looked at the, the dosha system. I had you journaling. So I want to know from you guys, I want to know what you learned about yourself when it comes to food. Like what did you learn in that, that process about your body and your relationship to food? All right, you guys, I will talk to you soon.